Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel, for watching my videos, and for supporting me. The growth of my channel is absolutely amazing. I, I'm blown away. I don't even understand it. But it's because you're, you keep coming back to watch more and more videos. And I really do appreciate it. And I love the comments that I get. So thank you very much. In today's news, my first item is an article by Aryan Hershey Ali entitled, We Have Been Subverted. And I just want to read you a couple of uh, sections of this article. The first one says, For me, it is all captured in the earliest memories of my youth. She's talking about how things changed in Somalia from when she was a child and they first achieved independence to when they d descended into civil war. <clears throat> Statues of Muhammad, uh, <laughs> okay, Muhammad Syed Bari, our dictator, sprung up across Mogadishu, flanked by a trio of dark seraphim, Marx, Lenin, and Engels. This particular communist experiment plunged Somalia into, plunged Somalia into bloodshed, mass starvation, and a 20-year period of suffocating tyranny. This is a story that's been told over and over again in every nation in, on earth that has gone into communism. This is not news. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is because it's good for us to become aware of the experiences of people who have been through it because we tend to, especially in America, and I think pr probably somewhat in Europe as well, we tend to take our freedom for granted. And we need to be reminded that freedom is precious and that it can be taken away. And this explains how it can be taken away. I recall my grandmother and mother smuggling food into our house. I also remember the whispering we felt the state was... I also remember the whispering we felt that, that the state was omnipresent. It could hear everything. The West's inheritance springs from a peculiar confluence of habits and customs that have been practiced for centuries before anyone branded them as ideas but they are principles, radical ones, that have given us the most tolerant, free, and flourishing societies in all of human history. Among these principles are the rule of law, a tradition of liberty, personal responsibility, a system of representative government, a toleration of difference, and a commitment to pluralism. Each of these ideas might have been extinguished in their infancy, but for the grace of God and the force of their appeal. Perhaps it is because I was born into a part of the world where those principles were non-existent that I feel a particular love for them and an instinct for when they are in danger. Right now, so many Western nations are under grave threat from the twin forces of cultural Marxism and an expansionist political Islam familiar to me from my youth. I think this entire article is well worth reading and, of course, as I always do, I'll put the links into the description field. This next article I want to read to you is um, one that I found very interesting. I, I try to stay away from politics as much as I can, but sometimes it's unavoidable. And this is a case. As some of you may be aware, Donald Trump was recently convicted on 34 felony counts in New York City. A lot of people feel like the conviction was, or the whole trial, in fact, was politically motivated. And so this news is interesting because it shows that there is a large swath of Americans that apparently agree. Uh, it says breaking Trump campaign has raised $200 million since the New York City conviction. $200 million. That's mind-boggling. I have to tell you, I don't give, to polit I don't give money to political causes of any kind, not to politicians, not to political causes. 
I just try to stay away from that stuff entirely as much as I can. I don't believe it does any good, but uh, apparently a lot of people do. The Trump campaign has raised more than $200 million since President Donald Trump was found guilty by a Manhattan jury in D.A. Alvin Bragg's falsified business records case on Thursday, according to Trump's son, Eric Trump. Out of the $200 million, $70 million of donations were raised from small dollar donors. At least 30% of those donors were first-time donors to a political campaign, Trump told Fox News' Maria Baratromo on Sunday. That's pretty mind-boggling. The $200 million was raised in a matter of just three days, which far surpasses any amount raised by President Biden's campaign in a similar time frame. Within 24 hours of President Trump's guilty verdict, the Trump campaign received $53 million in donations. The Biden campaign raised a total of $51 million for all of April. So something is going on. Uh, people are reacting to this uh, conviction in ways that I think are unexpected at least were by a lot of so-called experts who thought this would be the end of Trump. But uh, <laughs> apparently it's not. And this next article is related to that. It's titled, Voters Get Brutally Honest About How the Trump Verdict Backfired on Democrats. I'm all in with the MAGA people. Uh, I just wanted to read a couple of items in here. Kate Nicky, a lifelong Democrat who lives in New Jersey, told the free press that she is now considering voting for Trump. I feel the need to send a message to the Democrats that their dirty politics will not be rewarded, Nitty said. I'm no fan of Trump. That said, I have a huge problem with contorting the law or using prosecutorial authority in the name of saving democracy, which has been the Democrats' message for the past four years. And then there's another individual, Adam Motara, told the Free Press that the true danger to America is Biden and the Democrats. What's gotten me off the sidelines is that he does not, if he does not win, and by a rather sizable margin, that will validate this type of weaponization of the judicial system in the future, said Moratora, a lecturer at the University of Chicago Law School. Voters are not only supporting Trump with their words, but they're also throwing their hard-earned dollars behind his campaign effort. In the 24 hours after Trump was convicted, the campaign netted $53 million in small cash donations, a third of which came from first-time donors. Now, that, keep in mind that that information is from the Trump campaign, so I don't know if it's been verified to be true. But anyway, uh, it, it's just... To me, it's a uh, it's an interesting uh, response or reaction to the news that he was convicted. You know, normally when when someone is convicted, a politician is convicted, people think negatively of them. But apparently, that's not true with Trump. This next one is: Our spy and intelligence agencies are out of control. This is by Michael Schnellenberger on Public. Um. Starting in 2016, United States government intelligence agencies, news media, and establishment leaders in both political parties warned of a vast Russian conspiracy to interfere in elections. After the election of Donald Trump in 2016, the intelligence community reported that Vladimir Putin had favored Trump and aided his election through Facebook ads, Twitter bots, and other means. The following year, Trump's deputy attorney general appointed a special counsel to investigate allegations of Russian interference, a connection to the Trump campaign, and obstruction of justice. Every major allegation proved to be wrong or profoundly misleading. According to every serious political scientist, Russia had no measurable influence in the 2016 elections. There was no flow of money from Moscow to Trump through a secret bank account. Russia favored Hillary Clinton for stability and continuity, not Trump, whom it viewed as chaotic. 
In 2019, the special counsel said he lacked evidence to charge Trump with either colluding with Russia or obstructing justice. So um, part of the reason why I chose to share this with you is because it's not just the U.S. intelligence agencies. If you read about the um, what they call Russiagate, you will find out that the British, the Australian, the French, and the German spy agencies were also involved. So these problems are not just isolated to America. They're, they're across the world. Um, I think our, in, in general, not picking, you know, not singling anyone out, but in general, uh, spy agencies have, have gotten pretty much out of control and they're, they're operating in a rogue manner that's outside, I think, what the public would expect them to do. And so that's kind of troubling. This last article that I have is Air Force Academy graduates call it quits before their careers begin. <laughs> I just highlighted the first two paragraphs. During their final year of the Air Force Academy, cadets chose the special job, choose the special jobs that they will be assigned while on active duty. This crucial decision made in the nascence of one's career has far-reaching implications with regard to career advancement. The Air Force Specialty Code links available jobs with an alphanumeric designation and not surprisingly, pilot training represents the most popular AFSC for graduating cadets at the AFA. But the second choice is astonishing for cadets who have received a four-year education worth 416000 at an institution that is tasked to train career Air Force officers. The minimum commitment for an AFA education is five years of active duty service, and the AFSCs that obligate cadets for the least amount of payback time represent the second most popular job selections in the aggregate. The act is known among cadets as Dive in Five, and it is born of disillusionment and the realization that DEI entrenched military leadership, quota-based promotions, and failing standards are not what they signed up for. So I've read about this type of thing before. It's, it's not just the Air Force. It's impacting all of the American services. Uh, but apparently this is more evidence that there really is a problem that can be traced back to DEI, which if you don't know what that stands for, it stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's an academic theory, and I'm not going to even try to summarize it here, but suffice it to say that it's rooted in Marxist theory, and it is, uh, I would call it racist, because it promotes people based upon color and gender and things like that and not on merit and that to me is just wrong especially when you think about the military service what you want in the military is you want the very best people that you have available to be serving because you're going to be fighting <laughs> and you're going to be fighting for your life so you'd better be pretty good at what you do but you know, that's just my opinion Okay, before I end this, I have to remember I forgot yesterday. I got to show you my shirt. So here it is. Can you see that? <laughs> I promised I would do that in my daily news clips, and I will try to remember. I, I added a note at the top of my mind. Uh, um, I keep a, a list of which I update every day of the songs that I'm going to uh, react to and the news articles that I want to talk to you about. And I have put a note right up the top. Don't forget to show your shirt. So hopefully I won't forget anymore. And I apologize for not showing it to you yesterday. That's the news that I have for today. I want to thank you for coming to my channel. I want to thank you for who you are. And I want to thank you by praying for you. I pray that you will have an abundant life, that you will live a long time, that you'll be healthy, that God will keep you safe from harm, and that you will be born again if you're not already. 
I thank God for doing the same thing for every single person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.